Hey everybody, how are you? Happy Thanksgiving. I am uh, giving thanks that this is working now because I completely recorded this Thanksgiving Day uh, video and it was pretty good and there was no sound. So I had to scrap the old one. So trying again. I am giving thanks that my computer now seems to be working. <laughs> I'm giving thanks that this is a Thanksgiving Day for which I will I will be able to take time to eat good food and, and visit with good people and really give thanks for all of the things in my life. Today is a day when I know that my house is clean because we're having people over. So once in a blue moon, I dust and vacuum. We have put things away. We have recuperated from all the things that got dumped in the living room when we got home from our holidays a month ago. And then when our new furniture arrived, <laughs> everything piled up in the living room is finally put away or at least tucked away where you can't see it. And I'm glad of that. And I am glad for a day when I don't have any funerals or essay or essay sermons to write or anything I need to do because I can simply give thanks. One of the gifts of being, um, of being a priest and moving from like Ontario over to Nova Scotia and then back out here to Alberta um, is that I have had the opportunity to worship and give thanks with people across the country. And seeing how people do so in such incredibly different ways. In Canada, our Thanksgiving has has more to do with harvest. It's usually around the time or has been in the past when seasons are different, but climate change is happening. But our, 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 our after the farmers bring in the harvest, then we would give thanks. So quite often, traditionally, our churches would be filled with corn stalks and bales of hay and gourds and vegetables from gardens and all those things that happen in the fall. Now, I have experienced that, especially in my first little parish of Mitchell, when I was ordained 24 years ago. But in some of my other parishes, like Stratford, which was the partner to Mitchell, which is little a small city versus a small town, and in places like London, when I was at Redeemer, um, and Halifax, big city when I was there, um, the, the, the harvest wasn't so traditional. It was more difficult. I'd say to people, how do you how do you dress the church for harvest? They would kind of look at me like, OK, well, like, you know, leaves and those gourds that are coated in shellac so that they dry out and those things like that. It's beautiful. It always is beautiful. Every church is absolutely stunning at Thanksgiving, in my opinion. But these are churches that really didn't hadn't thought about what is our harvest now that we aren't farmers. And that's a beautiful thing. When I was in Bishop Cronin in London with Peter Wall as my priest, my supervisor, he encouraged people to bring in symbols of their harvest, recognizing that we aren't all members of farmers. We're not all places, all in from places that um, would have farm land, etc. So our harvests still exist, right? Like God didn't just create har farmers to be the harvesters. He gave all of us gifts. All of us have things for which we can offer and things that we can then receive from others and give thanks. And so he invited the congregation members to bring in symbols of their harvest. And I did that in my congregations as well. For instance, in one of my congregations, Stratford, we had a woman who was a crossing guard. So she brought in her stop sign, her handheld stop sign, as a symbol of her harvest. In um, a congregation in, in, in Edgerton here, we have a beautiful painter. We've got some painters also in, in, um, in Wainwright. And so they have brought in, in, in previous year, they brought in pictures that they have painted. We've had quilters. We've had photographers. We've had writers bring in their books we've had babysitters bring in symbols of their of their trade of their babysitting we have had we've had farm stuff we have had gardening things we have had um i had a lawyer and when i was in the diocese of toronto in alliston i was an honorary associate there in at saint andrews and we had a lawyer bring in a full set of law books as a symbol of their harvest it was absolutely beautiful massive but beautiful because the truth is, we are all given gifts from which we give back to the world. God has planted in our heads and our hearts a desire to play hockey or to teach or to be a nurse or to be a mom or a dad or to be a business person, to, you know, to search the skies, to appreciate the stars in the skies. And so telescopes have shown up and binoculars, all of those things. They are reminders of the ways that God works through us, works in us and through us that we then share with the world. Think about how many people in our congregations and in our lives, especially in the past, have knit, you know, the little hats for preemies in the hospital, or they quilt little blankets to be given to people like lap blankets for when they are in hospital or they go home. How many people prepare meals 
or help with Meals on Wheels or build houses for Habitat for Humanity. That may not be the job that you have Monday to Friday, nine to five, but it's something, a way that you give back to the community. Some people, they use their mind and their fingers to code on the computer, or they create incredible videos of a friend of ours on the on here, um, Contrafax, as a drone. And for a while there, he was putting in all these beautiful pictures of places he was going. Those are gifts that are shared. God has given you a desire to do something, has given you uh, talents or things that you're working on, to, on be developing as talents. And when you share them with the world, you are sharing your harvest. And that is absolutely phenomenal. And so for this for this Thanksgiving Day, whether you're up here in Canada having the sit down big family meal that you're going to eat too much turkey and get all that tryptophan and feel tired and, you know, want to wear those stretchy pants or open that first button on your jeans. Just don't forget to, to, to do them back up before you stand up or you're worried about having to face all those dishes. But heck, it was worth it with that meal. Or if you're, you know, someplace in your oh, yeah, and the bun fight. The whole, can you pass the rolls and you have one thrown at you? Good Canadian tradition, Thanksgiving, the dinner roll toss. Um, more like duck the roll. Um, or if you're down, you know, someplace else in the world down the States thinking, well, ours isn't for another month and a half. Take some time today to think and give thanks. And maybe even call up somebody and say, thank you for being in my life. Or thank you for being my teacher when I was in grade one. Or thank you for the way that you came over in the winter and you shoveled our driveway. I am going to give thanks for life. A year ago today, we, Rob and I were gathered in Edgerton at the Ag Hall because a, f a couple of families from our church said, come and be with us for your thing, with a, for our family Thanksgiving. And it was wild and it was loud and it was funny and it was incredible because just two weeks before that, yeah, two weeks before that, we didn't know if Rob was going to come home from the hospital. Life changes, our perspective changes, but what should never change, or if it does, it should just get deeper and, and, and greater, is our sense of gratitude, of giving thanks, being able to look back and say, thank you for the year past, and thank you for what's going to come ahead, and thank you that I, have, I can contribute, and thank you to all those who have contributed to me. So as you go about doing whatever you're going to do for Thanksgiving, I pray that you have a beautiful day and that this is a day filled with gratitude and opportunities to offer that gratitude to others. Thank you for being my church at home family. You have no idea how much you mean to me and how supported I feel by your presence in this community. God bless you all. I will see you again tomorrow for Church at Home with Rachel on Tuesday. But happy Thanksgiving.